Once again, creating change, please make your way into the ballroom. The plenary will begin in just a few moments.
I saw you on a Sunday in a cafe and all you did was look my way And my heart started to race Then my hands started to shake Yeah I heard you asked about me through a friend and my adrenaline kicked in Cause I've been asking about you too And now we're right here in this room Get a little bit nervous around you Get a little bit stressed out When I think about you Get a little excited Baby, when I think about you To your apartment, you told me to come inside. Got me staring in your eyes, and I'm not usually like this, but I like what you're doing to me. Ah, what you're doing to me.
Good afternoon. I'm honored once again to share this brief moment of a reflection around the calling of the names we just experienced. While the names of our deceased community members were scrolling on the screen, I was thinking of the gathering in Minneapolis this past November, the Transgender Day of Remembrance, and the community response at the end of the screening of each victim's photo and reading of their brief bio. I have been the convener of the Trans Day of Remembrance in Minneapolis for the past 20 years. And our service is very simple, very direct, very moving. After the brief reading about each victim, a candle is lit to honor that person's spirit. At that point, I strike a gong, similar to this, as a candle is lit to honor the person's name, and in response, the participants proclaim, we will remember. It's a moving and a tearful time. Like that transgender day of remembrance gathering, this is a time for reflecting and cherishing the names we saw scrolling on the screen. Some names were well known, some may be vaguely familiar, probably a few we didn't know. But one thing should be true for each and every one we viewed. We will remember. There were old folks, people who spent their many years working to make our queer lives meaningful and respected. They lived their lives as queer folks so that our lives could be better understood and accepted. We will remember. Many were young, taken from us too early. Their current work and future impact halted at a time when it may be needed, needed most. They represent a valuable lost resource. But they should also remind us of the dynamic energy that is exploding within the youth and young adults in our LGBT community and here within the walls of creating change. We will remember. There were those who died after living out their allotted time on this planet. There were those who died from illness, along with those who died from despair, and those who were taken from us by violence at the hands of others. We will remember. Each of those names we viewed this afternoon represent people who had an impact on our lives, either directly or indirectly. And we recall their presence not to be tearful or angry, although both responses are appropriate, but we recall their presence to reflect on the beauty, passion, diversity, and achievements they provided to our queer community and reflect on them in order to prepare ourselves for the trials ahead, to gird our loins, as scriptural writers would say, for the goals yet to be achieved and the challenges still to be overcome. As we return to our local communities at the end of the national gathering, we have those challenges ahead of us. I hope your takeaway from this portion of today's plenary gathering is as simple as this. Recall those we just honored. Reflect on their lives, their challenges, joys, and accomplishments. Respect what they have added to our queer lives and respond with our passion, talents, and actions when we return to our home communities and keep in your heart the simple mantra we have repeated today, we will remember.
Hello, Creating Change. Welcome back. How was your night last night? Yeah? Did you do that cruise? Did you do the dance? Did you check out the big D? I hope you all had a good time. Someone had so much fun that they left their wallet behind. Somebody from the state of Texas. So I've got it. Come see me if you want it back. A couple things I wanted to check in about. I don't know if you've been downstairs, but there's actually two vehicles inside the hotel. One is the mammogram van. Thanks to Alpha Kappa Alpha for that. Free mammograms for all human bodies. You can make an appointment or just drop in. The other vehicle is the all above all truck. Yeah. If you are about supporting abortion and reproductive justice, you have to go visit them. I went down there. There's all kinds of things going on. You can sign petitions. I got lots of swag. There's a game you can play, and you have a chance to win a free vibrator. It's a win-win. All of that's right downstairs. OK, so I'm going to get us started with our program. You know, getting old has its advantages. It can also be especially hard in our community, where families of kin sometimes turn their backs to who we are. And organizations like SAGE do the hard work every day to make the aging process less hard. <laughs> SAGE is dedicated to ensure the entire arc of the queer life is comfortable, loving, and gentle. So I'd like to welcome to the stage the CEO of SAGE, Michael Adams. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. As Barbara just reminded us, in order to prepare ourselves for the trials and struggles of the year ahead and the years ahead, we remember the people that we have lost, we support each other here, and we celebrate our heroines and our comrades. And in that spirit, it is my tremendous honor to present this year's SAGE Leadership in Aging Advocacy Award to the amazing and legendary Carmen Vasquez. <laughs> <clears throat> Carmen, Carmen was born in Puerto Rico, grew up in Harlem, and has been a cutting edge queer activist and leader decade after decade after decade. <clears throat> Her impact has truly been coast to coast and every place in between. Among Carmen's many accomplishments, founding director of the Women's Building in San Francisco. <clears throat> she helped found the Bay Area's Lavender Youth Recreation and Information Center in New York City. In New York City, Carmen served as the Deputy Executive Director of the Empire State Pride Agenda, building its powerful Pride in Action organizing programs and forging coalitions among people of faith, labor, and many other forces for progressive change. Carmen also served as the Policy Director of the New York City LGBTQ Center, where she was a founder of Causes in Common, a groundbreaking coalition of reproductive justice and queer liberation activists. While at the center, Carmen also co-founded the New York State LGBT Health and Human Services Network, a coalition of over 55 organizations that works collectively to get funding for queer health and human services. Eventually, Carmen served on the government side at the New York State Department of Health overseeing the distribution of state funding to queer organizations. 
And over the years, Carmen has provided board level leadership to many national LGBTQ organizations, having served on the boards of the task force, the funding exchanges out fund, and as board co-chair of the Equality Federation. But as amazing as all of that is, there is more. Carmen is not just an activist, she's not just a community leader. Carmen is a cultural warrior. Her essays have been published in several anthologies and she has made scores of keynote presentations at conferences and college campuses all across the country. She's been honored for her activism and her community intellectual contributions by the City University of New York School of Law with an honorary law degree, and to ensure that future generations will continue to learn from Carmen's legacy the Voices of Feminism Project at Smith College has conducted an oral history of Carmen's life and archived her papers. Her, her essays have been widely read in women's studies and queer theory classes in colleges and universities across the country. Carmen has taught us all. And after all of this, Carmen is still on the front lines, advancing sexual freedom as a fundamental human right by serving as co-chair of the Woodhull Freedom Foundation Board of Directors and serving as mentor, advisor, conference guru, friend, and so much more to so many people, including me and including so many of us in this room. And earlier this week, Carmen turned 71. Happy birthday, Carmen, we love you. We are all, we are all so much richer and so much more powerful because of Carmen's fierce and determined activism and leadership. Please join me in welcoming to the stage a true sage in every sense of the word, the one and only Carmen Vasquez. Wow. Wow. Bright lights. Thank you. Um, thank you, Sage. Thank the task force for the privilege of being honored at Creating Change this year. Thank you, Michael, for your inspired introduction and for your own leadership. I thank my family, my sister Raida, my niece Natalie, my ex and BFF forever, Carly, for being in the room. Um, and I thank all of you, many of you, so many of you whom I do know and have worked with over the years for your support and for being here today. Um, we had the moment of remembrance, and I need to bring my brother Eric into the room. Who He was a Texan, and unfortunately, a Cowboys fan. <laughs> he died this last October 9th in Austin, surrounded by his family and friends. He was my little brother, my friend, and co-conspirator, whom I loved deeply. He was the only member of my birth family to be present at one of my keynotes on the Creating Change stage in 1996. Today, I honor him by wearing his suit and tie. <laughs> Michael just told me about, uh, told you that I celebrated my 71st birthday this week. And of course, I am a boomer. <laughs> Yay to all the boomers out there. Um, my nieces and nephews are Gen Z or millennials. Most of my lovers are Gen X, with one notable exception. Um, and I, I don't know who invented these generation terms, um, but they often get used without much thought to the people behind the terms. And while today, or this moment, is about me, change is never about one person alone. 
There were countless others who paved the way for my activism and countless others who will follow me and build a bridge to the future. In my short time with you, I want to impart two things. We are and always will be an intergenerational movement. We are and always will be an intergenerational movement, and we should act that way. <laughs> Equality is not enough. Justice and liberation are where our hearts and minds need to lead us. <clears throat> and now I'd like to start the slideshow. Um, the images that uh, you go, you're seeing on the screen are queers, famous and infamous, who have made it possible for us to be here today. Um, there could be thousands of slides, but I only have so much time, I don't even know if I can get to the ones I have. Um, they are philosophers, poets, writers, athletes, historians, lawyers, activists, entertainers, and warriors. They did dare to speak their love, even when it meant imprisonment or death. They disguised themselves they fought in wars and built communities all over this country and the rest of the world that would someday grow strong enough to end the raids on our bars, remove homosexuality from the list of mental disorders that led to the torture and suicide of so many of our sisters and brothers. They fought for and won an end to sodomy. They took on the United States government and fought for the prevention and treatment of AIDS in the United States. They, we, won marriage equality. I was among those who celebrated Edie Windsor on the steps of the Supreme Court when marriage equality became a reality. She is a hero of mine. I know she's a hero to many of us. And equality is not enough. We are not done. Ultimately, victories past and present on civil rights and equality only assure us of our right to participate in society. If we behave properly, and don't defend the sensibilities of the society we have been given the right to participate in. It doesn't assure us that the, that, that society is worth a damn. It does not assure us of universal health care, housing for our homeless, services for our youth and elders, protections for our sex workers and our transgender sisters and brothers, or an end to the violence of poverty, the violence of racism, of sexism, homophobia, and transphobia. In the United States, I'm sure you are very well aware that we have a huge election coming up this November, and I hear some say that we can't defeat Donald Trump. Well, this old butch Puerto Rican socialist dyke don't believe in can't. And neither did all those people before us who gave us the strength to climb to the mountaintop. We can and must defeat Donald Trump and send him back to his lurid world. We can enact universal health care as a human right, not a privilege. We can enact a humane and just immigration and asylum policy. We can ensure equality and justice for our transgender sisters and brothers. We can work to decriminalize sex work. We can protect the right of all women to determine their own reproductive destiny. We can work to keep black men and women out of prison. We can work to eradicate poverty. We can work to continue to heal the, and protect the planet. We must embrace and elevate our dreams of human rights, justice, and liberation. I am a warrior. Thank you. Thank you. I, I am a warrior for justice and liberation because I believe in a future where we live in justice and peace. I believe in the transformative power of our love for each other. I imagine and believe in that future as those who came before us believed in ours. Imagine your own future and make it so. Remember and respect the people who got us here and chart a path for those who will be liberated by your own activism and love for each other. Repeat after me as I leave. Si se puede! Si se puede. Yes, we can! Yes, we can! Si se puede! Si se puede. Yes, we can! Yes, we can! One more time with energy. Si se puede! Si se puede! 
can. Yes, we can. Have a great conference. Okay, just gonna move a little bit of furniture. So while they're doing that, I'm gonna tell you a couple things. At 8.30 tonight, there's a whole lot of things happening all at once, which means you're gonna have to make some tough choices. There's a bunch of receptions. I don't know if you're aware. All of this is in the app, by the way, but I'm gonna tell you, because sometimes a human is better than an app, maybe. The Encapia reception is happening tonight. It's their 15th anniversary. And they were founded here at Creating Change. You can go to that reception at 8.30 in Live Oak, which is in the hotel on the second floor. There's also game night for a lot of non-alcoholic fun. That's going to be in Houston B, which is just below us. Houston B. And then there's also the Queering Democracy which is hosted by the task force. That's also gonna be downstairs at Dallas D3. All of that is happening at 8.30. Okay, so please help me welcome to the stage Ray Carey, the executive director of the task force, and Kiera Johnson, the deputy executive director. <laughs> yeah, Kira. <laughs> Welcome to Creating Change and our annual State of the Movement plenary. I'm Ray, and the pronouns she, her, they, and them work for me. And my pronouns are she, her, they, them, That's and welcome. The task force's State of the Movement plenary address is used each year to put forth a vision for what the task force sees as the critical issues facing our movement and that we should address. Historically, the speech has been given by me or us or a group of our staff together. With the continued epidemic of violence, harassment, and murders, our choice this year was very clear. We decided to center the voices of trans women of color. We also know that trans women of color are doing amazing, powerful work in communities across the country. And those efforts, unfortunately, are rarely in the spotlight. We are honored and excited to have these four very powerful women join us for the State of the Movement to share their perspectives, their leadership, and their vision. Please join us in welcoming to the stage Mickey Bradford, <laughs> Kathy Lay Johnson, Jade Lenore, and Jay Nice Mizrahi Poindexter. Y'all ready for this sister girl conversation? <laughs> About to have a sister girl conversation. <sighs> Welcome. When we were talking about this conversation that we wanted to have together today, we talked about the power of culture change. 
We all know that while policy and legislation having strong pro-LGBT legislative change is a necessary part of protecting LGBTQ people in our families, we also know that policy has and never will take care of all of it. So Janice, starting with you, in thinking about culture change playing a role in liberation, what does culture change mean for you? Mm, good question. Um, so culture change for me is having the uncomfortable conversations um, that move family members, that moves um, opposers, people who don't agree with you or people who have shut out the sense of understanding. Um, so that's the culture change. It's the mothers that will not accept the trans child. It's the fathers that beat the lesbian out of their daughters. It's those type of cultural changes and conversations that we really need along with policy as well. <laughs> that we really need to push the change that so rightfully deserved. Thank you. Any Anyone else want to add? And just to chime in on that, I think that when we talk about culture change, um, oftentimes we don't think about, um, like you mentioned, our own families mm -hmm. and the spaces that we take up. Um, as a black woman of trans experience, thinking about my community as a black woman and how they show up and how they embrace me as a woman of trans experience and do they do that wholeheartedly? Mm -hmm. So I think when we talk about culture change, we need to take an inward look at our communities and finding out exactly how they are celebrating us and how they are lifting us up. <laughs> um, culture change for me means reversing and removing stigma against sex workers, mm -hmm. especially trans, sex yes. wor trans women of color sex workers. Um, it means destigmatizing and decriminalizing sex work so that everyone receives the help and care and support that they need. Mm -hmm. um, culture change for me as an indigenous woman, trans woman, means <laughs> unlearning the binary assumptions of gender um, identities that some identities exist beyond that and are more encompassing of a person's totality than just a person's genitalia or outward appearance. It would be a society where a person that looks like me or a trans woman of color is in leadership positions where most often times we're shut out. Yes, right, um, that's right. And I understand that that will not happen overnight but every effort and every step heading into that direction is revolutionary and shifting change. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. Did you want to answer this one? Mm -hmm. So we need to shift not only our policies, but hearts and minds of our people, right? right. Because what is a law but the culture of the time crystallized into a policy? Mm -hmm. That's right. all it is. It just reflects our attitudes about what it is that makes up our society. And we have shows like Pose that are really shifting the narrative of what it means to be a trans person of color. But what we need to do is put cameras in the hands of every single black trans femme in this room and beyond to tell their stories. That's right, that's right. So if we're gonna talk about culture change, we have to talk about organizations like Black Trans Media, yes. House of Pentacles, that are literally training Black Trans Femmes to be filmmakers, to be storytellers, to shift the policies that govern our lives. We know that people have thought of trans people as an impossibility. And I know that for some people, a world without cages, a world without borders, yeah. is also an impossibility. That's right. That's right. We live impossible every single day. That's right. Right. And so if we're going to really do this, we have to lean into impossibility. We have to lean into visions of a future we have not seen yet. That's right. That takes visioning. That's right. That takes culture shift. Mm -hmm.
put it in the hands of black trans women. That's right. That's how we get this revolution popping. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We're going to make y'all want to stay all night. <laughs> so in, in 2019, um, it was another year, right? Another horrible year with the many violent attacks and murders of trans women of color. On the one hand, it's important and necessary that the media honor their lives. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're letting people know what's going on. On the other hand, we aren't seeing a public discussion about what change will need to occur in order to end that violence and to improve the lives of trans women of color. So Jade, what would you say needs to happen? You know, I, I oftentimes think about what a world without violence against trans women looks like. And it's such, it seems like something that we should be able to figure out in this country that we live in. One would think. Um, however, um, there's so many different dynamics and so many different things that I can think of uh, that come to mind. We're talking about culture change, we're talking about policy, and we're talking about how these things can collectively work together to really shift the paradigm of how people see us as people. And I think that that's something that we should take back as individuals, give ourselves back our human experience and celebrate the fact that we are beautiful, we are brilliant, we're intelligent, we're thriving in the spaces that we're in. And we're not just a statistic, right. we're not a number, we're something that's far greater than what anyone could ever imagine. Um, and a few things that may be helpful for individuals that may want to support and may want to uh, further this movement are relying on organizations that are doing the work in these communities. Mickey has mentioned a few organizations that are doing great things in this community. There are several. Um, and I think that oftentimes people don't look at the people you're serving. Trans individuals are business owners, their CEOs, their right. executive directors, their vice presidents, and many, many more. Um, and there are some grassroots organizations that are blossoming and that are doing wonderful and amazing things. So I think it's important to look within the communities that you're serving. Mm -hmm. Let me say that again. <laughs> look within the communities that you're serving to find the solutions right. to the problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and, and just, to, just to go a little bit deeper, that means invest in the black trans yes. woman or the trans yes, woman of color. Right. Yes, that means when you ask her to come to your spaces, that you honor her in the sense of a stipend and pay just like you do other people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That means that the suggestions for the population, for the access of resources or the shifting, all of those suggestions should come from the expert in that population, which would be a representative of the population. So we gotta be very clear if we're asking the world to support equality and to understand what we're going through, we first have to set the standards as a community ourselves for them to go by. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, and I just want to add that as trans women of color, as healers, as knowledge, keeper of knowledge, and who empower others, we must continue to write our own liberation stories right. and embrace our cultural knowledge and stories. Become presidents, city council members, mm. become senators mm. and writers of history. Trans women of color, specifically black trans women, deserve a world of safety, support, and love. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And this means that we need to trust black trans femmes, <laughs> period. That's right. I'm going to say right. it again. Uh, trust yes. black trans femmes, period. This is a cross movement. Uh -huh. 
We had a real missed opportunity when it came to these bathroom bills where we could have been building coalition that was led by black trans femmes that rallied together disability justice organizers and rallied together parents, right? We all have uses for these bathrooms. Right. They need to be accessible. That's right. They need to be affirming. These need to be spaces where everyone can enter. And so if we are really about shifting our movements, to combat anti-blackness, to combat transphobia, mm -hmm. to really, really make a meaningful effort in ending the epidemic of violence against black trans femmes. We have to trust black trans femmes, period. That's right, that's right. I just wanna say, Mickey, you didn't say the word intersectionality you talked about what intersectionality looks like. Right. And I think it's really important to name it, right? Because I think we mm -hmm. often say the word intersectionality, but we don't know how to live intersectionality. Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, I just want to appreciate what you just put into the room in talking about those bathroom bills. You're talking about intersectionality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's how you live it, right? Yeah. Not just talk about it, but how you live it. So Actually. thank you. And that's the importance of policy change and legislative change as well. That's right. Because with the culture shift, we also need the policies and the legislative bills to back us up. And as Taffy said, get encouraged. Um, get encouraged, know about the voting process. Know about your elected officials. Contact them, they work for you. And also, what you should know, if you work in United States and you pay taxes, you are entitled to representation. You should see a councilwoman that's a trans woman. You should see a state representative that may be lesbian. You should see those things, but it's been withheld from us as a community right. because there's no value on our life, so they certainly aren't gonna give us our rightful place at the table. We gonna take it, baby. So you gonna, gotta get on in it. it. Yeah, it. you gotta get in it, and you gotta be respectful and responsible with it. If you educate yourself, you know what you can do, and you go to the table with a wealth of knowledge. Shay. I, I so appreciate you bringing up more, le more of the legislation and the policy and, and, and the kind of connection of this. And, and Mickey, with the work that, that you do, what do you see as some of the, and you brought up the bathroom bills that we're, we should be fighting, but what are some of the policy and legislative changes that you're seeing that, that really need to happen? Yeah, I mean, there's a, a coalition of trans leaders across the country that have come up with a trans agenda for liberation that we'll talk about later. Um, and I won't go through it all right now, but it starts with trusting black trans femmes and it ends with ending the prison industrial complex, just to give you a summary. Yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you know, easy stuff, right? Super easy stuff. Um, but at the, the core of it, it is about ending state violence. Mm. It is about ending the violence that makes our communities the most vulnerable to interpersonal violence, to discrimination, to being over-policed, criminalized, caged, and murdered. And I know that that is a tall order, but collective liberation requires our collective effort not just laws and policies, an entire cultural shift in this country and globally. I want to add um, legislation against sex workers. Um, many of my indigenous and Pacifica sisters engage in sex work um, for many reasons, survival, and then also um, mostly due to severe discrimination. And SESTA-FOSTA has been very negative and that needs to be removed or repeal as they have only been impacting our queer and trans women of color community engaged in sex work. Also, we need to remove the legislation recently introduced that remove protection of LGBTQ individuals in workplaces and places of services. Um, and also promoting the idea that promotes the idea for service providers and organizations such as faith-based organizations that it is okay to dismiss or terminate people based on their gender identities or gender expressions. 
Yes. Thank you. Representation of our communities is key. We want and need diversity of people and experiences in companies, organizations, universities, in Congress, and in state houses. Taffy, how do we need to think and do differently as we evolve our leadership development strategies to ensure that trans women of color have access to the information, networks, training and opportunities needed to claim and retain leadership in various ways throughout their careers? Well, I mean, I think everyone up here said it over and repeatedly over that we need to invest more efforts mm -hmm. to highlight lived experiences of black, indigenous, trans women of color. Indigenous identities and trans women of color are mo some of the most marginalized people within gender diverse communities not seeing them present in spaces where they need the most support from as leaders further perpetuates marginalization. And so leadership strategies need to center our identities in their work. Leadership cohorts and building efforts need to be more intentional about recruiting trans women of color to lead those cohorts. And by using their vulnerability and the power of their personal stories so that society can understand how we continue to be oppressed and impacted negatively. And it's also important to look at the intersectionality of our identities and how all the different aspects of our identities contribute to a multiple overlapping system of discrimination That's and right. disadvantage. That's true. Mm -hmm. Very true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think you offered up a, um, a part of this experience that I really celebrate, which is like development and growth. And when you think about leadership development, um, I've heard so many times and oftentimes I come to conferences and there's someone talking about, you know, we're gonna do this leadership development uh, track for persons of trans experience and there's all these different dynamics. Um, and oftentimes to me, the missing part is what you mentioned, the leadership from individuals that look like me and sound like me and share a similar space that I have. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I think it's important that we continue that narrative. Um, I can honestly say that in the work that I'm, that I'm doing, um, leadership development is such an integral part of it, um, but I think that we're just scratching the surface. I would love to see a woman of trans experience that someday would be a president. I would love to see a woman of trans experience that Can would someday. Can we just someday... pause on that for a oh, moment? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's real. I mean. That's real. <laughs> I mean, it's a real place. It's a real place. And yeah. I think that sometimes people don't, we're, we're in such this, this space where we can't, we can't see the future oftentimes. Right. Mm -hmm. And the future is bright. The future, it's not that the future can be bright. bright. The future is bright. Um, because we're lighted beings. You mentioned healers. We're such lighted beings. Trans folk are such lighted beings. If you don't know, look, turn around, look at a trans person. <laughs> well, <laughs> turn around and look at a trans person. I'm sure they're around. <laughs> they may or may not be, you never know. Um, but they're such lighted beings and they're such lighted vessels. And, and that is something that is to be celebrated. And leadership development is just scratching the surface. Yeah. Um, but that's something that we're all yeah. should be capable of, of, of uh, acquiring. And that's something that we should all be entitled to. Mm. And these organizations that have these amazing, um, oh, I almost said amazing, amazing budgets. That's not what I wanted to say. <laughs> Although we do like coin. That's not what I wanted to say, but that's what I was thinking. <laughs> but these organizations that have the capacity mm -hmm. to do so many great things to support trans people, mm -hmm. and their choice is to not. I sometimes have a, I have a difficult time rationalizing that in my mind, you know, I'm looking at amazing things happening for communities and we're constantly talking about the detriment of, 
you know, where we're at and where we need to be, and there's all these resources. However, there's, some, there's someone that is not making the shift. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can help you make the shift. <laughs> we can help you make the shift. Um, but it's just, it, it's mind-boggling to me, and I know that's something that we all collectively share. Um, we have the answers. Trans folk have the answers. You need to ask us. We will support you that's in right. that journey. Right. Um, yeah. Yes. And I, yes. I tell you, um, so I'm from Detroit, and um, I, I am the vice president of the Trans Sisters of Color Project. And that agency started over 10 years ago off the murder and the violence and the mistreatment of black and uh, trans women of color. And we're very happy to have that agency. It is fully facilitated and ran on the day-to-day -day basis by all trans women. And that's something that we are excited and very proud about. And and I said that bit earlier because why we, why we clap and celebrate that, do you know that we are not funded by anyone locally? We are funded by all national funders. So while we're celebrated for the work and the lives that we're saving in Detroit, no one is investing into the lives of us. So that's where that key piece comes in, where I said honor, honor the expertise, honor the experience, honor the stories, because they come at a price. So about two years ago, um, a trans activist that a lot of us are familiar with, Raquel Willis. Please shout her out, please yes. shout her out. Her I know she's watching. Um, Raquel Willis, who is now um, executive editor of Out Magazine, um, started a project called Black Trans Circles, housed at Transgender Law Center. And this project um, was not only aimed at equipping black trans women in areas of, of uh, heightened violence, um, particularly in the South and in the Midwest, not only equipping them with the tools to organize, the tools for leadership development, but tools for healing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because we are traumatized. Mm -hmm. This oppression has consequences on our mental health, on what we are able to do on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And so I am encouraging folks who uh, are hiring black trans women, who are working with black trans women, organizing with black trans women, to keep that in mind. Keep a trauma-informed approach to your work. Mm -hmm. Because there is so much that it took for all of us to be up on this stage, to be in this room. So much going on in our heads, in my own mind right now, about what it means to be a leader, imposter syndrome, all of those things, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's not just about healing individuals necessarily, but it is about shifting our culture to be a culture that is always healing to black trans women, mm -hmm. always healing to black trans femmes, always about healing anti-blackness, always about healing trans transphobia. <laughs> we need healing justice and mm -hmm. we need it now. Thank you. I'm so, I'm so struck as you talk, the, the combination of the need for infusion of resources, the, the leadership development, um, and, and kind of the, the connections that make your work possible mm -hmm. and, your, and, and fulfilling your vision possible. And there is so much attention, particularly in the media, uh, on violence and harassment, and, and yet, getting to know you all and, and hearing more about your work, there, there is so much hope. Mm -hmm. And there is so much power in your own leadership. I think about all the people who are watching this on the live stream, young people who are seeing you uh, and inspired by you. And, and it makes me wonder, what gives you hope? What, what inspires you? What, what gets you up every day? 
I mean, I will say that for me, this is not about me as a person. This is about collective liberation. And so when I start to get down on myself, when I start to, to self-doubt, I start to think about my own limitations, I have to remember that this is not about me. This extends beyond me. Mm -hmm. It extends beyond this room. All of us up here are standing on the shoulders of giants, people that have paved the way long before we could even say the word trans, <laughs> long before any of us put on a wig. She reading. <laughs> 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 but in all seriousness, right, like, there's so much power in this room, and I just, I actually, let me take just a minute to, to acknowledge, if you are a black trans woman, mm. if you are a black trans femme, could you just, just stand up or just raise your fist so that we can acknowledge you and your work and your power and your legacy and your leadership? I say, sister, yes. I say, I yes. say, I say, I say, I say, I say. Um. Yes. That is what gives me hope, mm, that we are not in this alone. This struggle is global. There are trans women in South Africa who are organizing right now for their that's right. rights. That's right. Trans women in Jamaica organizing mm -hmm. for their rights. Yeah. If that doesn't inspire you, I don't know what will, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I think one thing that, um, that inspires me, for those people that I've had an opportunity to meet, um, one thing that, that I can say is the inspiration for the work that I do comes from such a deeply rooted uh, passion for people. Mm -hmm. And in my passion for people, my purpose in life is to be a living, breathing example of what love is, what it looks like, what it sounds like, and what it feels like. Mm -hmm. And that passion is not one that I've uh, granted on myself. That's mm -hmm. one that I've come to understand that has manifested within me. And I try to impart that on each and every person that I encounter in whatever way, shape, or form that may be. Um, so my hope is that individuals that are in this room, and as Mickey mentioned, beyond this room, know and celebrate the oneness that is within you, know and honor the identity that you are, that you have, and celebrate the person that you are from the inside and allow your beauty, your brilliance, your joy, all of those things that resonate within you, allow that to, to come to the surface and to just celebrate yourself. I think oftentimes we talked about that before. We don't celebrate uh, each other enough. We don't um, give each other roses while we're here. And um, in this moment, I just want to celebrate, you know, these beautiful, lovely, amazing individuals that are on both sides of me. Um, and also celebrating all of the individuals that are out in, in the room. So for those of you that tweet, Twitter, Instaweb, Instagram, <laughs> Facebook, Bookface, whatever it is that you do, um, you can tweet or use the hashtag, it's uh, CC20, mm -hmm. um, and honor someone that, that you celebrate or, or someone that gives you hope, someone that inspires you. Um, there are several people, I can't tweet right now because my phone is somewhere, um, <laughs> but there's so many different people that I can, I can think of right now, one of which um, is a new executive director of Black Trans Women Incorporated, Ms. Diamond Styles. <laughs> And the amazing Tony Michelle, which I think is not in this room, or maybe is the amazing Tony Michelle, um, just an amazing individual, and so many more. Um, I can see Kayla. I can't see because of the lights. So if I'm, I'm, I can't see you, I'm so sorry, but I love you still. Um, but there's so many amazing organizations that are doing so much, so much amazing work, um, and celebrate them. Celebrate them now. Yes. Celebrate them in the moment. Yes. Hug them. Yes. Embrace them if you're a hugger. Okay. Okay. Boundaries. If you're a hugger. If you're not a hugger, shake their hand or whatever it is that you do. Um, but yeah, fist pound. Okay, there you go.
I know we don't want to go nowhere, but I'm going to ask you all the final question. Yeah, I don't know. We have got a conference of over 3,000 people. Many are right in this room here at Creating Change. Mm. Jay Nies, mm -hmm. I'm going to start with you, but I would love for all of you to answer. If there is one thing you would encourage folks to do, one thing, one action they can take mm. that would have a positive impact on trans people, gender nonconforming folks, non-binary folks, what would it be? Um, I would ask or, or encourage um, that you, one, register to vote. Yes. Um, that in that sense, you honor your own voice. Um, for too long, especially community members, they don't feel the hope in being a part of the voting process or registering or, you know, just being in that part of the political sector. But it is very important. Um, these decisions that, let's be clear, these white men of privilege and power make and enforce directly, directly hit our lives. And I was doing some research and I come to find there are two versions of the Declaration of Independence. There is an amended version that Congress amended to say inalienable. The original version was written by Jefferson, and he used the word inherent. So that means that when the Declaration was drafted, he said that every person born in America should be free from government control, should have the ability to live the life that they see fit, should be able to arrive in life in their authentic way without any question. And the fact that it was then amended to say inalienable rights. No one was at the table to have inalienable rights but white men. Therefore, that should encourage you to push because your mom wasn't considered, you weren't considered, the immigrant wasn't considered. None of the people that make up this world was considered in that action, and that should encourage you to push back. Taffy, we're going to go to you next. Um, so I would just like to add that as um, not only centering black and indig indigenous trans women of color in leadership roles, but also offering ongoing support and ongoing love and make sure that they not only receive the love, education and liberation, but also that they are supported through their, their growth. Nikki. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Well, I'm just gonna piggyback off of that. In order to find um, a place that will support your growth, right, you need a political home. Yes. Mm -hmm. Similar to a church home, it's a bunch of people up in your business. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> now, my political home is Southerners on New Ground. <laughs> what up, songbirds? <laughs> And that is a place where my, my political education mm. Mm. is put front and center. My personal experiences are weaponized, mm. right? And I have a group, a collective of people who are invested in my leadership, Amen. Amen. invested in making change with me, yeah. invested in carrying me across the finish line with them. My advice to you is to find a political home, not just any political home, mm -hmm. one that is clear that it is strategic to center the leadership of black trans women and black trans femmes. Right. A political home that is clear in its mission to end a legacy of colonization in this country. Mm -hmm. That's right. Find your home, boo-boo. 
<laughs> You're also welcome to song if you live in the South. <laughs> or want to live in the South. And whatever your higher power is. I tell you, for me personally, my faith is everything to me. Mm. Um, God has literally um, brought me up and justified me and brought me to places like these so that I can tell other people the way to be different and the way to go about life in a real honest and true way. And every day I walk into a different blessing, a different opportunity that I have not earned, and that's called grace because it's extended from God. Thank you. Ooh. Last but definitely not least, Jade. So I'm going to leave you all with something to think about. I know you're like, girl, something to think about, really? <laughs> um, yes, something to think about. Um, I want you to, and I know you asked about an actionable item. This is an actionable thought. That's it's actionable. an actionable process. Yes. Um, and it's the, the leaning into, we mentioned earlier, hope. Mm -hmm. And leaning into the understanding and the knowing that change is now. Mm -hmm. uh, and understanding that the conversations that are being had, the narratives that we've heard throughout this week, the narratives that we've heard before, um, the time is now for a culture of accountability. Mm -hmm. And I would not be telling you a truth if I said that, you know, next year I would love to, you know, have this conversation and sit on the stage and, you know, all these wonderful things. But I, I don't want to talk about these same things That's again. Right. That's right. That's right. And when I say I don't want to talk about these same things again, I'm saying that we have information, we have, re well, we're getting more resources, but we have the information that we need to, to impact change. And gone is the day that we say, I don't know, or I'm unable to reach, or I'm not sure of how to. There's too many, there's too many, there's far too many individuals, organizations, beautiful people, that are here in this space that can support change. So I say this, gone is the day of not knowing. Gone is the day where change does not come. The future is bright. The future is now. And I say unto everyone, go forth, be lighted, be brilliant, be loved, celebrate yourself, celebrate individuals around you and know that you in your entirety are loved. Thank you. Will you all take a deep breath with us? I want to thank each and every one of you who came to be here for our plenary. I am rarely speechless. We know. <laughs> you know. This is true. <laughs> I am so grateful. I'm so grateful that I get to share this stage with you. I am so excited to be like your BFF after this, because we're going to be. <laughs> They're gonna be like, why is she texting me? Um, <laughs> Cause we doing things. Um, what our panelists, what I hope you heard here is not just a call for how to better support trans women of color but how to be better humans. It's I need you to hear what I'm saying. Everything that was set up here wasn't about how you can help me, how you can help us, how you, it's how can you be a better human to other humans?
The work is not going to change until we change ourselves. Please help me thank our guests. Thank you. You are amazing. Ray, I love being with you. I love y'all. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>
This is for our elders who give us hope. For those yet to come. This is for Ms. Major, because I know she's watching. This is a movement rooted in joy. This is the trans agenda for liberation. <clears throat> Black trans women and femmes living and leading fiercely. Yes. yes. Black trans women must be trusted to lead. Black trans feminine people hold the expertise and the solutions to end violence in our communities. We hold the knowledge to create a world where black trans feminine people have the freedom to thrive. We envision a world where black trans folks have equitable access to health care, housing, bodily autonomy, and intergeneration connection. Okay. Yes. 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 Beloved home, trans people belong. We demand a movement that honors Native American, Alaska Native, Native Hawaiian, indigenous, and black migrant transgender, gender non-conforming, non-binary, and two-spirit peoples by centering their leadership. Mm -hmm. right. Indigenous or migrant, we understand that our relationship to this land that is our home is as important as our relationship to ourselves and each other. We demand a world where indigenous cultural practices, land and body sovereignty are respected, where trans people are never forced to leave our homes mm -hmm. and where we have the freedom of movement to seek out our own belonging. Yes. yes. Defining ourselves, our bodies are our own. We demand a world where the health care we need is readily available and where our bodies, HIV statuses, disabilities, and viral loads are no longer criminalized or policed. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. We envision a world where disabled, deaf, sick, and mad people are guaranteed complete self-determination yeah. and the resources to live our lives to the fullest. We demand the freedom to define ourselves and our futures, free of non-consensual procedures and free of gatekeeping. Yes. Yes. Intergenerational connection and lifelong care. Our communities are only as strong as our relationships and care for trans people of every age. We envision a world where all trans people are affirmed from the moment of their birth and are empowered as their authentic selves at home, at school, and in public life. Yeah. All trans people deserve a long and fulfilling life. We are building a movement that values the beauty of youth mm -hmm. and elder wisdom and understands that aging is nothing to be feared. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> freedom to thrive. Trans people deserve the freedom to thrive. We demand a world without cages. Yes. 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 We envision a world where people in sex work economies have rights and protections. Okay. Yes. Yes. And where sex work is no longer used as a justification for violence and harm. We demand not only freedom, but active community support in building lives for ourselves and our families on our own terms. Quiero invitar a las mujeres trans latinas y afro latinas a que nos acompañen al frente para que se sientan incluidas como yo me siento incluida hoy en este panel. We would like to invite everyone who are trans people who would like to come and join us on the stage to also be part of this process. So please join us. Estos pilares son el principio de nuestras demandas. These pillars are just the beginning of our demands. Les pedimos que hagan más que solamente preguntas, qué es lo que pueden hacer por las vidas trans. 
We invite you to do more than just ask what you can do for trans lives. Háganlo y únanse apoyando nuestros esfuerzos con la agenda trans para nuestra liberación. Yeah. Act and join us by signing on to the Trans Agenda for Liberation. Trans Agenda! When I say pues trans yeah. agenda, you say for liberación. Trans Agenda! For liberación! Trans Agenda! For liberación! Trans Agenda! For liberación! Con deviación. Con deviación. Con deviación. I'm sorry. You inspired me with every people. Contact to me. Contact to you. We keep us safe. We keep us safe. We keep us safe. We keep us safe. All right, just, I got a couple of things to tell you on your way out. Don't worry, you're not gonna hurt my feelings if you leave while I'm talking. It's just important information that I wanna share with you. First of all, at 8.30 tonight, yet another thing for you to choose from. There's a sugar and spice drag show that's gonna happen right here. And that's gonna be followed by the Agents of Change Ball. There's gonna be trophies and categories, so you're gonna wanna walk. Of course, you can get your Sephora makeover right before that. Uh, if you have any of the translation equipment, if you could please return that at the end of the day so that we can get that organized and back out to people tomorrow. Another thing to let you know about is uh, queering the census. So 2020 is a huge year for our democracy, not just because we have the chance to unseat the person currently in office, but because it's a census year, and the task force is trying to make sure that LGBTQ people get counted in the census through its Queer the Census campaign. Look for organizers around the conference. They're gonna be wearing Ask Me How to Queer the Census pin so you can find out from them most easily. Another thing for you to know, when you checked in, you might have been told about the hotel's Green Choice program. If you don't have your towels and linens changed every day, the hotel tells you it helps the planet. It seems reasonable, right? Less water, less soap, less laundry. Well, Unite here, the Hotel Workers Union, is clear that this is not true. Not only does it have no environmental goodness, it actually hurts working people, the staff that clean your rooms. It lets the hotel hire fewer workers and means housekeepers don't have a regular schedule. It also means that the rooms are much dirtier than they would have been, and this makes more work for the housekeepers and takes more cleaning products, which is not good for the environment. So it's not good for workers. The task force has long advocated for worker justice. A living wage, non-discrimination protections, pay equity, inclusive paid leave policies and humane working conditions. Please support Unite here and its members, the workers in this hotel, by declining the green choice option. 
Yeah. And for your own self-care, I just wanted to make sure that you know about all of the opportunities. Most of them are in the city room views, which are on the fourth floor of the hotel. They're community care spaces, including seven hospitality suites for people of color, trans and gender non-conforming people, youth, which is 18 to 24, elders, people with disabilities, ace and aromantic people and bisexual pan. You can also visit the Mind Body Soul Cafe, stop by for an acupuncture, massage, a nice little cup of tea, and many paths spiritual center for some support in the lovely insanity that is creating change. All right, thank you for staying. We will see you back here tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you at the ball tonight. Take care. And I